Hi, I'm Matty Stevens. These are my goals so far. Matty, how are you? All good, thank you. Yeah, ready for the game tomorrow. Yeah, long trip up north. Uh, what are you going to do to pass time? Uh, normally the boys play a bit of wolf. Um, I don't know if everyone will be familiar with that game, but it's a game we like playing at the minute and uh, yeah, it definitely passes the time. Lovely stuff. Right, so obviously you've got eight goals already, scored in all four competitions you played in. I yeah. think you might be one of the only players in the country that's done that in the EFL. Yeah. Uh, I'd have to do my research on it. Um, so we've got them all together and just going to have a little watch and little talk about them. So start off first one, penalty against Colchester. <laughs> So a nice way to obviously get off the mark, but um, were you expecting it to be the sort of pressured situation of a penalty? Do you know what? It was probably the most nervous I've been taking a penalty, believe it or not. Um, penalty's a penalty. Um, I always put myself forward to take one. Um, I think as a striker, you, you should do that. And um, they definitely add up come the end of the season. I think when you see all the players who, who's up there towards the golden boot, nine times out of ten, they're penalty takers as well. Um, but this one was quite nervous because uh, I was speaking to the boys the day before in the car school and I was on a belt, I think the year before last season, we had quite a bad run of penalties, especially early on. Um, so that sort of stuck in my mind, which wasn't great. But again, it was the time of the game. I think this was 2-2 at this point. Um, this was to go 3-2 up. But yeah, I sort of knew where I was going to go and it always helps when the goalkeeper goes the wrong way. So yeah, that no, was an a unbelievable feeling. Yeah. Did you already say, maybe before the game, I'm going to take the penalties this season? Or? No, do you know what? There wasn't actually... I didn't know if there was a penalty taker or not. Um, I know now that Reeves, he took the last couple beforehand. But when we was awarded the penalty, straight away I said, oh, I want to take it. And I think Reeves, he had a go at that point anyway. He scored the second one. So I said, look, Reezy, I feel confident. Although I was nervous, I said, I feel confident. And he said, look, if you, if you feel confident, it's a good way to get me strikers off and running. Mm. Um, so to be fair to him, it was a, a, a top move from a skip to do that, you know what I mean? And um, yeah, to get off and running in the first game of the season is always nice. Yeah, nice weight off your shoulders, I'm sure. Definitely. Right, let's go through to the next one. Get yeah, Ipswich in the cup. I mean, that, that must have been incredible, scoring against a Premier League team. Was that, was that the first time you scored against you know, a team at that level in your career? Yeah, yeah. In, a, in a competitive game like that, yeah. That was the first time I scored against a, a Premier League club. Um, I had one in the pre-season against Brentford, but mm. like I say, in a competitive game, uh, this was the first. And it's probably my favourite goal out of all of them, to be fair, what you're probably going to show. Mm. Um, I had a lot of my family up in the stands and um, again, it was to put it 2-1 at this point. So uh, it was an unbelievable game, unbelievable day. Um, the, 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 I remember the fans and the support was really, really good this day. And uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a good goal to be fair to it. Mm. It's safe to say we, had, we gave them a good game. Um, did, did you see, was, did you feel like there was a difference in quality in terms of, obviously, their you know, Premier League? Yeah, the, the, I mean... Don't get me wrong, we didn't have a lot of the ball. Mm. Um, but we we knew um, the game plan. We knew if we stuck to it, we was there's opportunity, especially with set pieces. I think we scored from two set pieces in this game. I think Omar got the first one, didn't he, with mm. a set piece. So we knew if we could uh, stick to the game plan um, and stick to the shape, we uh, there'd be opportunities. And listen, they're unbelievable. So I had some really good players on the day, but... Yeah, we we come out on top. Mm. There's going to be a few headers in here. Just tell us about your headings. You know, you're not the tallest striker, but you you seem to have mastered the skill, really. Yeah, I don't know where it come from. I think um, I, I used to when I was younger. I used to play centre back. I don't think you're allowed to head the ball now, being so young. But I used to love heading the ball. Goalkeeper kick it. I'd always go for it wherever it was on the pitch. Um, so I think that might have helped. And I just think with with my head and ability at the minute, I think it's just down to bravery, wanting to to 
you know, I see a, a good opportunity. Whenever there's a corner set piece, it's another opportunity for me to score a goal. And uh, like I said, I think it's bravery, the want to mm. to score, um, and then timing. Because you see a lot of players, big players, who you'd expect to be good in the air, but their timing's not there or whatever. So mm. I think timing's massive to do with your head and ability. Mm. Right, on to the third one. This is uh, another header, Cooley in the trophy. That was a pretty, pretty crazy game. Um, with, with that header, you, you didn't really have to get off the ground, um, and the, the, there'll be a few more of those as well. Um, just talk us through that one. Yeah, no, that was um, a set piece we worked on. I was sort of had to hang around the back, and uh, yeah, I, I just, again, I see it coming over the top, and I use my body really, strength, and um, I think I just wanted it more than the, the defender, really. And mm. once uh, it sort of got over everyone else and it was coming towards me, I just thought, get good connection. Go back across goal, obviously, because the goalkeeper's shifting to that near post. And uh, it, it actually clipped a little bit of the bar, if I remember rightly, and, uh, and went in. So, yeah, it was a, it was a crazy game. Mm. And, uh, yeah, another very enjoyable one, though. Yeah, I don't want to give away your secrets, but do you feel like you can win the mental battle against a defender? Uh, yeah, I'd like to think so, yeah. Um, again, I'm always on the move. Um, and like I said in the, just before, it's, it's the want to head the ball and, you know, just keep my eyes on the ball. And then uh, once it do come to me, try and get the best connection I can get and, and hope for the best, really. Yeah, and that's that celebration a little different to your usual one with the, the hand up in the air. Well, I don't think... I, I, we might have had fans outside, I'm not sure, but at yeah. the time, I remember seeing more of the fans around this way, so I didn't want to run off into the, <laughs> to the darkness to myself. So. Fair play. Right, next one. This is Carlisle. I mean, that was impressive. You were quite far out to be able to guide it in. I know it's gone through a few bodies. You must have been pleased with that one. Yeah, again, another training ground routine. Um, and it was just, it was quite far out to be fair. I think it was near the penalty spot, but it was the day of the game. I think it was quite wet. Mm. So it had a little bit of a zip off the surface. And um, it also went through, there was Ogs and, and the defender there, it sort of went through them. So I think the goalkeeper might have seen it a little bit late as well. Mm. Um, but again, it was just watching the ball come in and, and uh, get as good contact as I could get. There was, you can't really generate much power there unless it's mm. a, a quick ball. Well, that ball wasn't, yeah. it wasn't, it was in between really. It wasn't um, wrapped in, but it wasn't slow at the same time. So, yeah, just got a good connection. And then once I see it sort of zip off the surface and go through the two players who was in front of it, um, I knew it had a chance. And um, luckily that day it, it went in. Mm. And that was the first game back at the stadium after the pitch had been repaired. That must have been quite nice to, to get back to winning ways there as well. Yeah, I was really looking forward to it the day before. Like I've said many a times, I love playing at home. I, love, I liked playing um, at Plough Lane before I was at Wimbledon. It was mm. always a stadium I, I enjoyed coming to. Um, but yeah, it, it was um, exciting to get back there and it, it was a really good, really good day. Yeah, and then that's the celebration we're kind of used to seeing now. Um, is that a new one for this season, or have you done it before? No, that's always been my celebration for a while, to be fair. Mm. Um, but again, this all depends on the surface. Um, <laughs> I think, as you'll see in the next video, yeah, the other side, where the pitch was, uh, why the games wasn't at home, yeah. there was, uh, I was a little bit worried with doing it into that side. So, uh, again, it, it depends on the pitch, but... With the weather that day, it was uh, it was ideal. Mm. And what does the the arm movements mean? It was just a. <laughs> I remember I, when I was younger, going to watch West Ham and Craig Bellamy was there, and he never done mm. a knee slide. He used to run off and and sort of do that with his fingers. Mm. Um, so I thought, with the pitch and the weather, I always like doing a knee slide. So if I can chuck in something similar, it's always nice. I think it's nice to have a sort of. Uh, signature celebration and, and this is definitely my one. Well, it helps when you score more often than not. Definitely. 
yeah, that's the second one you were talking about. Um, I guess you, that was just about the anticipation, though, and Alice is going to shoot. That's it. That's it. You know, since I've been, like I said, I was, I was a defender when I was younger, but since I've been into the um, striking role, um, you're always taught from a, such a young age to follow up on, on mm. the goalkeeper. And it's something I do every game. You know, nine times out of ten, it, it doesn't come to you. But that one time, like in this game, it does. And uh, again, it's just about getting good connection. And uh, sometimes them ones are a little bit harder than what you think. Um, but they're really, as as easy as they look, they're probably one of my favourite goals to score as a striker. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that that was uh, just following up. I, I wanted the ball originally from um, Smudge, but he can hit the ball, as you can see there. That mm. was a, a good distance out. He got a lot of power. And um, yeah, just followed up and, and tapped it on. Yeah. What would you say is the thing you work on most in training? Um, I'm I'm an in the in the box finisher, so all mm. all my finishes I like in training. I like to do in and around the box. Really. Yeah. Um, very rarely I score many outside the box because as soon as they go out wide, that's my first thought: getting the box. Yeah. Um, so yeah, any, any type of finish really with my head, left foot, right foot, anything in the box, reactive finishing like bounces off mannequins but you know defenders in the games and, and reacting to that and they're my sort of goal so yeah that's that's sort of what I'd practice on in finishing. Mm. And then this is arguably the all important one got you your first hat trick. Yeah. That must have been an unreal feeling to, to get your yeah. first match ball. Yeah, unbelievable. Um, the whole game was, like I say, just an uh, unbelievable feeling being back there, get a hat trick. I had a lot of my family again in the stand. Mm. Um, I was confident going into the game. I said to my dad on the day, I said, uh, I still feel confident, so I think I'll get two or three. And, and that day I did. So um, it was an unbelievable feeling. I, I went, once Teal's got the ball, I knew after my second goal, I need one. If I get a chance, I score. I felt confident in the game, and luckily it came early in the second half. Um, I sort of peeled to the back, and the defender followed one of our players in. And then once it come to me, you know, I don't expect to miss them ones really. Um, and yeah, it was just a unbelievable feeling. Mm. Obviously, family is a massive part of everyone's lives. Um, with your dad, obviously, coaching with you, your boxing and that sort of thing, is yeah. his advice that he gives you for football perhaps different to what the average football fan would give you? Do you know what I mean? Uh, he, do you know what? He don't really, he don't give a, a lot of advice because mm. um, he learned a long time ago, sometimes you can give advice, but then when it comes to the game, the manager's telling you to do something different. So mm. a couple of times when I was younger, he'd, he'd say to me in the car after the game, you know, why were you doing this? Why were you doing that? And I'd say, Dad, I was being told by the, mm. the staff that's what I should do. And he's like, oh, well, I feel a bit silly now telling you what to do. Um, so he sort of stopped with that. But he always had his opinion after the game on, on me performance. And he's, you know, very strict on that. Um, he can always, he always looks for things I can do better. But I think um, that's made me the person I am today, um, to be honest with you. And he comes to all the games and, you know, him and all my family for all the stuff they've done to me to get me to the point where I'm at today. You just want to make them proud. So, yeah, it's an unbelievable feeling when they're in the stands and, and you get a goal. Mm. And where's the match ball? Is it anywhere nice in the mantelpiece? Uh, I, I'd like to get it framed. It isn't framed at the minute, but it is, uh, it's nice and safe. Uh, I'll keep that one nice and safe. Yeah, and the next one's more come at home. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll talk about that celebration in a minute um, but Tuesday night that must be a real buzz and we haven't had too many Tuesday night games this season really no we haven't it's, um, the boys were talking about it. it's been a, a strange start to the season with obviously the cup games and then the games we missed in the league mm. it seems funny you, you play one league game maybe two and then there's the cup and it's it's all jumbled up really but mm. um, I do like a Tuesday night game um, especially when they're at home mm. Um, and this was a, a good performance as for the goal. 
Um, it was a frustrating start to the to the game for myself personally because I had a header early on in the yeah. first half which the goalie saved, um, and then there was a couple of chances. I had one headed off the line. Mm. I had um, Miles went one on one. I followed up and it sort of ricocheted off me, and went back to the goalkeeper. So before this goal at this point, I was thinking, you know what, it might not be my day. Um, but then yeah, as you see, Josh following up. Um, capitalising on a mistake from the defender there and you know squared it I, I couldn't really miss mm. perhaps the pitch wasn't well watered there this is what I'm saying as you can see there the turf <laughs> was sort of cutting up and there's a, a mixture of uh, the turf cutting up there and, and exhaustion I think so uh, that's what sort of happened at the end of that celebration mm. right I think we're coming on to the last one yes I haven't got to say who that was against because we all know. Um, that must have been, yeah, to, to sum up how that felt. Unbelievable. You know, when, when you first come here, you, you know how much it means to the fans and the players and the staff. So um, when these games come around, the whole week, the build up is quite intense. Um, everyone's looking forward to it. And I think as a striker, again, you want to score in every game, but to score in this game is. Uh, is one you really want to score in. And uh, to get the first away from home at their ground and obviously hearing how long it's taken for us to, to beat them there. Um, and also that was three in a row that, that, mm. that we've won against them. So, um, yeah, unbelievable feeling. Like I said, you want to score against them and, and to do it so early on in my Wimbledon career was a, was a really good feeling. Talk to us about your relationship with Omar. Obviously, he's, he's flicked you through there for the goal. Um, what's he like to play alongside? Yeah, well, he's a he's a warrior. He um, he competes for everything. He don't stop running. He's a handful for any defender. Um, and yeah, that especially this game, he was he was bullying the defenders really. Um, quite a few times, he was getting a lot of flick ons or letting the ball bounce in behind, which we can then get up the pitch and get onto. And that one, yeah, it was a, just a, a, a nice ball over the top and it was just, again, about me getting the, the right contact to, to put it in. Do you think it helps you in the castle? Of, it's, it's him and Reevesy, isn't it? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah him and Reevesy, yeah. So, I got, again, I get on with all the boys in the team. Mm. Um, but, yeah, we've we got a good relationship on and off the pitch, me and Omar, and uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying playing up front with him at the moment. Mm -hmm. Do you sort of take it in turns who drives in? Yeah, yeah, so we're taking turns. One day it'd be Reevesy. They, they come to me, they always come to me because I'm on the way. Yeah. Um, so they leave their car at mine. Um, if I drive or I jump in with them boys on the way there, but it definitely helps. You need that that chemistry off the pitch as well as on. Mm. Um, and goals like this obviously show that. Yeah, definitely. And then just thinking about boxing, who of your teammates would be a good boxer, do you reckon? Ooh. I reckon Omar would be up there. Mm. Yeah, Omar could be. Yeah, I think you've got to go for one of the, the big dogs. John Joe, experience. Uh, yeah, he's a, he's a unit. You've got um, Jono. Um, the heavyweights. <laughs> the heavyweights, really. I think a, a good big man will always be a good little man's the same. So I guess you would have to go for, for one of those, those two. Mm. And then just to finish, obviously, Barrow tomorrow, long long trip up, as we, as we spoke about. Um, what's your message to the fans that are going to be making that journey as well? Because it's, it's a gritty one, and it's probably one of the longest journeys that we'll make this season as well. Yeah, just uh, get behind us like they always do, and um, I can assure them that the boys will be given 100% in the game, and hopefully we can all come away happy with three points. Lovely stuff. Matty, thanks for your time, mate. Thank you very much.